Okay, it is now 4 p.m. So, oh, and there she is. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi, Gail. Okay, uh, I am uh, going to um, give a little, this is a little different than most meetings we've had uh, because it starts with special order of the day, which is not something we normally do. So I, I would like to welcome our two new board members, Tina Tu and Gail Mayhu. Thank you. Welcome. And to mention that Director Fultz is also present. And we do have a vacancy on the board that will be filled at a later time. Um, so I'm going to convene the special order of the day right now, which would be at 4.01 p.m. So let's see if I can see participants and stuff, see if they're there. Oh yeah, we have a number of participants, okay. So I'm, I've convened the special order of the day meeting and I'm gonna call item 1A, the oath of office. And I'm going to turn this over to Rick Rogers. Thank you, uh, Chair Henry. And I'm gonna ask the uh, district secretary to administer the oath of office. As soon as she okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the first thing I would like to mention at, is that this is um, for the public. We have already um, uh, had the oath of office for these two women sworn in today, and um, they have signed the um, cert certification. But I will go. Oh, I don't see Tina. Is is she on there? She was on here. Tina, are you there? She just dropped. Well, and She'll I, probably be back. I don't she see She might be problem. having broadband. She might be having broadband issues. Okay. So, uh, Gina, what were you saying? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I, I don't think it would be a problem, particularly since this is... Um, uh, being done sort of for ceremonial purposes to go ahead with there administering she the oath to Gail. She's back. She is back. Yeah, you all were frozen and then it oh, Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead with the oath of office. I would like you both to raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Tina Tho. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend, that I will support and defend, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, against all enemies, against, against all, all enemies, foreign and domestic, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance, to the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. And I take this obligation freely. And I take this obligation. And I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of ev evasion. Or purpose of evasion. Of ev evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge. And I will and well, I will well and faithfully discharge the duties upon which the duties upon which I am about to enter. I am about to enter. Congratulations. Welcome to Thank the you. board. Yes. Congratulations to the two of you. 
Okay, uh, now we're going to move on to item 1B, election of board officers for 2021. And this is going to be in two parts. Uh, the first part will be the nomination and election of the board president. And at once the board president has been uh, decided upon, I will then turn the meeting over to her. For him. <laughs> oh, I think I think it's already decided, don't you? What? Uh, so I. I Okay, what were you going to say there, Tina? What did you say? Well, you said I will turn the uh, the meeting over to her, and I corrected you, and I said, or him. No, no. There needs to be a nomination for board president. Once we decide on board president, I will then turn the meeting over to the board president. So uh, what we need here is a nomination for board president. I would like to nominate Gail as board president. Okay, we have a nomination. Do we have a second? I will second it, okay. Uh, now I'm, I'm going to, um, to let the public talk right now, and then the board members can talk. And uh, anyway, if I'm doing it backwards, that's the way it goes. <laughs> so attendees, I'll let you have three minutes, and you may only speak once about who you how you feel about this nomination or how you don't feel about it, whatever. So you need to raise your hand, Larry Ford, I see your hand. Thank you, I'd just like to offer my hearty congratulations to the two new directors, Director Mayhood and Director Toe, thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other comments about the nomination for president or any, you can also congratulate them if you wish to do that. Okay, seeing none and there is, whoops, I did see somebody on the phone, but I don't see them now. So, um, all right. So I I will go to- Elaine had her hand up. You have one hand up. Oh, Elaine. Okay, Elaine. I just wanted to say, I think Gail would make a great president and um, uh, that's all. I think she she has lots of experience in uh, heading meetings, so I I like that idea. Okay. So uh, I'll go to the board now. If there's any comments, I guess Bob, you're the only person who hasn't commented yet. So. No comments. No comments. Okay. So we have a nomination, we have a second. Uh, Holly, could you please call the question? Holly, you're muted. I think I'd be used to this by now, I apologize. President Henry. Yes. Director Falls. Yes. Director Mayhood. Yes. And Director Two. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. All right. Then I will turn this over 
to our new board president, Gail Mayhew. Okay, um, we now continue on to item of business 1B, the election of the board of officers. And now we're requesting nominations for vice president for the coming year. And I would like to nominate Lois Henry. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Um, we can now at this point um, ask any members of the public to make a comment on this. I don't see any comments on the people that are on the chat line or how about the phone line person? Okay, hearing no comments from the public, then we can go back to um, the directors. Um, anybody wanna make a comment on that? If not, then um, Holly, would you please call the roll call vote on that, please? I will, President Mayhood. Yes. Director Falls. Abstain. Director Henry. Yes. Director Two. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, that brings us to the conclusion of the special order of the day, and that is at uh, four eleven. And now we convene the special meeting of the board of directors. Uh, meeting at 4.11. And can you uh, call roll call for us, Holly? Yes, I will. President Mayhood. Here. Director Fulce. Here. Director Henry. Here. And Director Two. Present. Thank you. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the meeting agenda? Uh, staff has none. Okay. Um, if I would now like to ask district council. Oh, I'm sorry, Tina. Go ahead. All right. My Zoom is doing weird things today. Um, I actually was going to ask that we change the agenda slightly, actually significantly. So the bo new board member will affect the makeup of um, the committees. And so therefore, I think we should delay items 4A, B, and C with the exception of Smigwa and Ladock appointments to be deferred until the new board member is appointed. Um, the reasoning for not delaying on the Smigwa is that there is a meeting this Thursday, which is important for us to be represented. And um, so I'm just, I would like that to be deferred I, if possible. I, I, I get your point. I think it would just be simpler to go through the agenda items as they are on the agenda to be cleaner. And you can bring those points up at each one of the agenda, okay. I, rather okay. than going through a vote on a changing the agenda and everything else, if, if you don't mind. Sure. All right. At this point, I'd like to ask district council to discuss the use of the chat function. Okay, thank you, uh, President Mahood. Um, just a reminder to um, the attendees and, and also the panelists, uh, please refrain from using the chat function. Um, if you do use the chat function, it is a public record. Uh, that could be available for uh, anyone who wants to review it, but not all of our um, board members routinely monitor the chat during the meetings. And so in order to have a, a good record and make sure that everybody's listening to everybody's comments, it's really important that you give your comments orally uh, during the meeting or submit them in writing in advance. And thanks very much for your understanding related to that issue. Okay, so this is the uh, stage where we have general oral communications by any member of the public on district uh, business that is not on the agenda today. And um, if you will uh, raise your hand, we'll, um, you'll have three minutes to uh, talk. Okay, I don't see any raised hands. How about the one uh, phone-in person? Okay, um, that closes general oral communications. And now we're going to call um, item 
of business 4.A, which is the board of director meeting dates and times for 2021. And I'd like to turn it over to district manager Rogers to discuss. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, item 4A is the board of directors meeting dates, times and locations for 2021. It's recommended that the board of directors discuss and adopt a meeting schedule for 2021. The recommendation of staff is to hold the regular scheduled board of directors meeting via video teleconference facilitated by community TV until uh, Santa Cruz County COVID-19 restrictions, restrictions have been lifted. The board will revisit this issue when the time comes. It is also recommended that the regularly scheduled meeting uh, continue to be on the first and third Thursdays of every month at 5.30 p.m. Open session convening at 6.30 p.m. unless holidays or other uh, foreseen events cause uh, a change. Since uh, January 2019, the regular meeting dates for the board of directors were determined by to be the first and third Thursday of each month, except on a holiday or, in, or any other unforeseen events cause a change. The time of the meeting has been 5.30 p.m. with open session convening at 6.30 p.m. The locations of the meeting were at the operations building unless a larger venue was required until Santa Cruz County uh, COVID-19 restrictions require that we conduct virtual meetings. Please continue, uh, continue the attached schedule for the board of directors meetings in 2020. Uh, there is a resolution uh, in your packet and, and also the district secretary prepared a calendar showing district holidays and district meeting dates. I'll turn it back over to the chair for discussion. Okay. Um, are there any public comments on this? Uh, public comments? Uh, see any, how about the telephoning in? All right, and to our panelists, uh, Director Fultz. I'd like to modify the schedule to um, be just the first Thursday in July and the first third, excuse me, uh, the third Thursday in July and the first Thursday in November and December. That would eliminate the July 1st meeting, the November 18th meeting and the December 16th meeting. Uh, due to holiday conflicts. Anybody else like to comment on that? Director Henry or Director Toe? Uh, I did consider the 1st of July. I was looking at that for the, I'm assuming you're meaning the 4th of July conflict. Um, and I, I don't foresee a problem with it. I think it's probably better that we meet than we not. Are you trying to, uh, Director Fultz, are you trying to defer that meeting to later in that month? Is that the idea? As I said, there would be one meeting in July. It would be the third Thursday of the month. Um, I would prefer not to do that. I think it would be good if we went forth with the first of July. Yeah, I, I would, um, I, I, I'm not in favor of what you're suggesting. I, I think that, um, as we've found, um, we end up sometimes having too many of these special meetings where we don't have um, as quite a strong um, transparency in terms of getting the schedules out. And certainly it would have been handy to have had a second meeting in December this year. Um, you know, I suppose that if um, we find that we don't have enough business, which I, I just think that's gonna be almost impossible this coming year with, dealing with the financial and the construction aspects of the fire and the financial aspects of dealing with COVID, I think we're gonna be pretty busy. So I um, I understand how in past years, there haven't been these in these three months, the second meeting, but I for this year, I would prefer to keep it as suggested by staff. Okay, any other comments? Do I have a motion? Uh, I, I also agree that uh, to keep it as staff and I would make a motion to adopt it as is. Okay, do I have a second? What? Lois, are you speaking to me? Um, you're you're muted, Lois. She's muted. I think it was Gina. Lois, you, you're muted. 
unable, I'm unable. Ah, there we go. I'm unable to raise my hand for some reason. Well, raise it physically then. <laughs> just do that. I can we'll see follow. you if you just raise it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it, would it be appropriate right now to make a resolution number 11, 2021, uh, setting the regular board of directors meeting days for 2021 as the first and third Thursday of every month. Tina just made a motion to the effect that we uh, okay. take a recommendation of the staff. So we're looking for a second on that. I'll okay. second it then. Okay. Um, any more discussion by members of the board? If not, can you call a roll call vote? Could, could I offer President Mahu just a procedural clarification yes. here? Um, okay, so the motion is not to adopt the resolution that's in the packet, that, as I understand it, is that correct? It's, to, uh, it's a motion to uh, approve the staff's recommendation to set the meetings for the first and third Thursday of every month. As they are written in the calendar that was sent to us, yes, that it's in the packet. Okay, and I the, my, the purpose okay. for that clarification is that there is a resolution in the packet, but I have a couple of concerns about the language in the resolution. Oh. Well, um, you want to talk about those then? Uh, well, they may be moot if the motion is not to simply adopt the resolution. The but, well, I I said eleven. I I said the name of it. Can somebody read the resolution? I can't. I can't call that up right now without screwing up my Zoom. Sure. So it's or, or Gina, you can go ahead. Yeah. yeah Gina, okay. So um, the resolu the proposed resolution is resolution number 11, 2021, subject setting regular uh, board of director meeting days for 2021 as the first and third Thursday of every month. Um, I, I can. Would you like me to read the whole thing, uh, President Mahood? No, if that if that's the resolution that we're being asked to vote on, then that's fine. Okay, and the, the clear. But what are you trying to clarify that you're worried about? Okay, the fourth whereas clause in the resolution um, references COVID restrictions in a way that's that's not quite correct. Um, and the last sentence in the now therefore be it resolved clause. Um, it. The now therefore be it resolved clause suggests that all meetings will be conducted via video teleconference facilitated by community TV. And that's not necessarily correct. We don't know when the ability to conduct video meetings is going to end. So my suggestion uh, to deal with these issues would be to strike the fourth whereas clause from the resolution. And in the now therefore be it resolved clause strike um, everything after it's his Thursday of every month and then have it be period and strike via video teleconference facilitated by community television. Would somebody like to make that an amendment to the resolution? I amend my, my motion to what Gina said. Do we need to vote on that amendment, Gina? Uh, um, since it's friendly, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's really okay. necessary. All right. So it's a friend, she's taken it as a friendly amendment, okay? Then uh, we can go ahead and vote on that resolution as amended. Holly. President Mayhood. Yes. Director False. Yes. Director Henry. Yes. Director Two. Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Um, the next uh, item is the standing committee composition. Um, District Manager Rogers, would you like to uh, present that? Yes, thank you. Uh, let me make sure I'm unmuted. Yes, uh, item 4B, District Committees. Uh, staff is uh, recommending that the Board of Directors review this memo and take possible action of combining the administrative and budget and finance committees and the engineering and environmental committees making two committees instead of four. The district's board policy manual provides for five standing committees that are advisory to the board. The five standing committees are as uh, follows the administration 
budget and finance, engineering, environmental, and Lumpico assessment district oversight, the latter committee. Each standing committee shall have no power or authority to commit the district or to take action on behalf of the board of directors. Standing committees shall hold meetings at such times and frequencies and locations as deemed necessary by consensus of the committee members. Committees are encouraged to meet at least monthly. Each standing committee uh, shall at a minimum be responsible for uh, the administrative committees responsible for matters of internal and external administrative matters, including communication, staffing, and staff support. Uh, the budget and finance committee uh, shall be responsible for review of the district finances, including rates, fees, charges, and other sources of revenue, budget and reserves, audit, investments, insurance, and other financial matters. The engineering committee shall be responsible for the matters of uh, design, construction, replacement, repair of district facilities and property, including the capital improvement program, master plan, and other engineering and operational planning uh, related matters. The Environmental Committee should be responsible for matters of stewardship of the district's properties, including the urban water management plans, water conservation programs, uh, classic watershed education grants, watershed management, resource management, and other environmental uh, related matters. Uh, the Lumpico uh, Assessment District Oversight Committee, no changes were being proposed. Um, they are responsible with the oversight of the uh, Lumpico Assessment District. Uh, committees are to meet at least monthly, requiring staff to, to prepare for agendas and background information. In addition to the monthly committee meetings, the district has two regular board of directors meeting each month, bringing the total monthly regular meetings up to six. Staff is requesting that the board consider combining the budget and finance committee with the admin committee and the engineering committee with the environmental committee, reducing committees from four down to two. Uh, this uh, could require extra time for the two meetings, but it will reduce the amount of staff time required for preparation and the number of meetings every month. Um, staff is definitely open to other options or leave as the board uh, desires, but we would definitely like the board at least to discuss the amount of committees and board meetings and preparation it takes for set meetings. And with that, I'll turn it back over to... Uh, the chair for questions or um can we are there any public comments on this topic uh beth thomas point of, point of order yes so is the um process now that we're always going to go to public comment first and then to uh, board comment uh, i just want to get clarification on uh, that please chair i um, i am following the script that was sent to me um, and I don't, uh, for all of these items that I should go to public comment, um, I actually agree with you that I think a one round of uh, board members talking first, then um, going to the public sort of makes more sense to me. Um, but I would, I'd, I'd be happy to do it either way. What, what do, uh, is that what you would prefer, Director Holtz? I just want clarification on which way it is you're going to manage the meetings going forward. I, I think uh, future meetings, I will have one round of comments by the directors, then go out to the public, um, and at that point see if there's a motion. Um, but for today, I am following the script that we were all sent, so you got a copy as well. Um, so you knew what was going to be happening, as did... Um, Director Cho and um, it was it was a suggestion, not a mandate, as I understood it. <clears throat> okay, all. yeah, all, all right. All. Uh, can I hear uh, from Beth Thomas, please? Yes, thank you, um, Director Mahood. I, I and I appreciate uh, Director Fultz your comments because I also find that it. It makes no sense to me that the public should speak on a matter before hearing what the board has to say. You could save a lot of time. Um, I have a concern and, and a couple of questions that may help to answer, answer that. And one is that it seems to me, and since my involvement with a lot of these committees, that there's quite a bit of public uh, interaction and quite a bit of public participation on these committees now. I would like to know if you have assessed how many people on average attend these committees that you're proposing to combine? 
because it will have a direct effect on the ability of the community to interact. Thank you. Uh, District Manager Rogers, did you want to answer that? I mean, all I can address is the one committee I'm on, so. Um, obviously, we're not trying to limit public comment. We're trying to, you know, and the public will have a chance to comment. I look at it as the same on each of these items that come before the committee. It's just that as we move ahead, there's a lot of preparation for committees. And it takes a lot of time and the board requests to stay as we've been doing it in the past. Maybe we should try then to limit the number of items that, that are on the agenda and, you know, stretch it out in a, over a longer time frame. It's just given the, the amount of work we have to do with everything else and prep for all the meetings. And it winds up being that what happens at committee meetings, there's less preparation and a lot of it turns out to be oral or last minute. I don't want to say thrown together, but it's, I don't think it's as the quality as it should be uh, information to the board and to the public just because of timelines and, and trying to get information in. So it tends to wind up being more oral. Um, and I don't think that's a very good thing either. It would be good to have a more report oriented. You know, if the board so desires to keep everything the same way, as you know, staff will continue to do this and we will, you know, make a, a good effort to get the information needed to board members and committees to, to make good decisions. Did any other members of the board want to address that? Um, Tina? Or, Tina, did you I, want to- I think that? Lois had her hand up first if she wants to well, go ahead I, and say I, something. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, Point of order. Are yes. we with Are we with the public or are we with uh, I, the board? I am simply asking if I, I I don't think that Rick actually quite answered um, Beth's question, which had more to do with the uh, what the effect would be on public uh, participation. And so I, I don't I, think I, there'd be any effect on public I, participation. All right. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's the question. I don't, you know, there's, I don't see any less. We're not trying to keep. I think there'd be a lot. Well, okay. I, I don't see it that way, but that's, that's okay. So that's why the point of order, are we talking now at the board level or are we going to be talking at the yeah. community level? We are talking now at the community level and I'm calling on Jim Mosher. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, I'd like to agree with Beth on this. I think there's an added important uh, part to the committee meetings, which is it gives public, gives people the opportunity to participate as uh, decision makers on these committees, public members. And this is an important step in grooming people for, for uh, taking on more leadership roles uh, on the on the board. So um, I think it does make a difference um, in terms of public participation because I, you, we already have a number of nominations for these committees from the public. And I really think this is important to have uh, public members involved in the decision-making process. Um, I do appreciate uh, Rick's concern about the um, amount of work for staff. And I'm wondering if there's some other ways uh, that this could be addressed while still providing the opportunities for the public to have this kind of involvement with the board. Thank you. Rivka Lund. Hi. Um, I, I actually tend to agree with Rick. I think this is a great idea to combine the committees. I think there's a lot of synergy between the two different groups. I understand the, the meetings themselves may end up being longer meetings, but the content covered by budget and administration and the content covered by um, engineering and environmental provide a lot of synergy. And there, I think the, the topics, would, there'd be a lot less back and forth between the committees if everyone's in the same discussion. So I actually, I think this is, it would be a great idea to, to bring those together. Okay, thank you, Rivka. Ken? Are 
Are you there? You might need to. Understand. Now I'm not. Okay. Now I'm not muted. Okay. Uh, what I didn't see in the handout is anything about the size of the committees if they are combined. I only saw the reference to the existing size. If we're going to combine them and they're going to have multiple responsibilities that they didn't have, I think it needs to be stated that there's going to be a larger committee. And there's always a problem with if a committee gets too big. So I think, <laughs> okay, so I think that's something that needs to be addressed before the decision is made, whether we combine them or not, how we're going to mitigate a lot potential larger committee. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Um, Beth, I see you have your, your hand up again, but our normal practice is only to go to members of the public uh, once. So that's, I'm going to stick with that. Um, uh, Lois, would you like to now begin board comments? Uh, yes, I would. Okay, I, I've been thinking about this and I understand what Rick Rogers is saying. This is a lot of work for staff. And so I was trying to think, how could we do it a different way? And I, I was thinking, okay, what if we have a budget and finance committee meeting and, and then a separate uh, admin committee meeting and that they're one right after the other, say, and they're one hour meetings um, that the agenda is one or two items. It's not a whole bunch of stuff um, that um, by say, by having a like say nine o'clock to 10 o'clock, half hour uh, break, and then um, 10.30 to 11.30. But it, when you combine the committees, you can't have six, seven, eight people as public members. You'll never get anything done. So if you have the two meetings, one after another, short agendas, uh, not a lot of stuff. And actually there are things that go to committees and for, as far as I'm concerned that should just go to the board to start with. So might look at that. So you could have, let's say three people on admin, three people on budget and finance, but if you combine them, are you gonna have six people plus two board members? It just gets, difficult. And I really do want to re reduce the work effort for our board members. I'm not our board members, our staff members, because they have been working so hard all this year under difficult circumstances. So it's just a suggestion that I, I think just combining two meetings you can't have so many people of the public participate, but you have them one after the other um, or two, and then next you do the other two. So it, it, it's still that many meetings that they're trying to get away from, but let's try to make them more simple, less complicated, uh, Fewer days. That's all okay. I'm thinking about. Thank you, uh, Director Henry. Uh, Holly, I see you have your hand up. Is this just some point of information you wanted to make, or no? I, I had a suggestion. Um, what if we just had two meetings a month, and we choose either budget and um, admin one month, and then the next month, and and just go every other month? If there's something that comes up where we really need to have a budget and finance meeting, we can always have a special meeting. It's not like we can't change things around, but having, having so many meetings, especially the ones that we've had recently where it's the first three days of the month, we have three meetings in a row. It is very difficult, especially for staff that has to go to every one of the meetings. Myself, Rick, 
sometimes Stephanie, um, it's, it's hard to keep track of everything that's going on and minutes don't get out as fast as they should. If we just spaced it out a little more so there wasn't, weren't so many meetings every single month, that would do the, the job as well. Uh, if, if I could just quick interrupt and ask, if I can ask senior staff to hold off till the board yeah, I, and then give senior staff a chance um, right. to, to respond. respond. I, I think that would be a good idea. Director Fultz? Director Fultz, would you like to comment? Um, Director Fultz, I, I guess you can't hear me. Can everybody else hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, um, so my go. my internet is now unstable. Okay. Do I sound okay? You're fine now. Okay. So when I look at these uh, suggestions that, that are in this category, I always like to look at whether or not this is going to um, have an impact on public participation. Um, and it's public participation, not only in the meetings themselves, but also participating on the committees. One of the things that our district is going through or will be going through is a pretty large demographic shift over the next few years. And it's very important that we have um, people participating in our committees that a few years from now are going to be stepping into leadership positions. Um, I, I just can't say that enough. Um, I have a number of other comments uh, about this suggestion as well. Uh, first of all, if we're really going to cover the same amount of ground, that is have the same amount of items on the agendas, then the amount of work preparing for each one of those items is going to be the same, whether it's one committee or two. The, the only savings that I can see is the preparation of the agendas, which is not um, a small task necessarily, but since we typically only have two or three items on the agenda, preparing that agenda is um, something that I think can be done. I, I believe that Holly's comment is, is probably more to the point which is I think it's incumbent upon us to schedule these committee meetings so that they aren't all in the same week. I do, um, I do know that uh, year before last and even the early part of this year, um, Holly was really just slammed every first week of every month because she was having to handle you know, four meetings basically at the same time. It, it is too much, but I don't think that argues for cutting the number of committees. Um, finally, I, I'm, I'm not really thrilled about the idea of having fewer longer meetings. Um, I, you know, I and I know a number of people that are on the committees still work. Um, we still have full-time jobs. And um, since we are not having these committee meetings in the evening as we used to, you know, many years ago, they're being held during the work day. And so the impact of... Um, saying that we're going to have two meetings back to back, basically consuming an entire morning, you know, that's, you know, that's basically uh, one tenth of my work week. Um, and that, that just isn't something that I think we should be asking either our board members that are still full-time employed or our committee members that are full-time employed to have to do. Um, so my suggestion would be don't make any changes to the, um, uh, to the uh, committees, unless we're planning, by the way, on doing fewer things. Now, if the message is we're not going to cover as much ground, we're not going to cover as many items, well, then I can see some savings. But, of course, that wouldn't be my objective. Um, I do think in order to reduce the workload in Holly, the peak workload, making it more level, we do need to space out the committee meetings. But I don't see any reason why we should be cutting the, uh, the number of committees at this point. Thank you, Director Fultz. Uh, Director Toe. Thank you. Uh, I agree with Director Fultz. Um, I think that perhaps the number of committee meetings actually increases community volume or com community involvement. Um, more people and more committees gets more people in the community involved. I think that's a really good thing for our district um, and public participation is always good. Uh, I also agree that maybe we shouldn't stack them all at the beginning of the month. Maybe each committee could pick a, like the first week or the second week or the third week, one week of the month in which that committee could meet 
and then let the committee themselves decide what day of the week that that will be. Um, uh, depending, you know, I think the committee should decide their own schedule. I don't think we should determine that for them because if, again, like Director Fulp says, if they're working or if something else is going on in their life where they can't do it during the day, I don't think we should determine that it should be at 9 a.m., right? So I think um, I would I would like to keep the committees as they are and, and keep the public involvement going. And um, I, but I also, as I mentioned in the beginning of this meeting, I think this is just something that um, we should potentially defer until after the new board member is appointed and that we could vote on this um, then. So uh, I'm open to more discussion, uh, but I would prefer to defer this this one to um, to after the next meeting. Thank you. Okay, I, I, I think I'll just um, express, I, I agree uh, entirely with the idea that we don't wanna decrease the number of committees because yeah. it means fewer public members and, and Director Fultz is right that we need to be bringing people along. Um, and just having more expertise is great. I, I do actually sort of like Lois's idea of making two of them um, more or less back to back, and then you could have them on the second and the fourth, uh, second to the fourth week, so that then that's not loading up on the week that you've got the um, board meetings. Um, and you know, within that week, the two committees can decide. And that does that means that you don't have to sit there through the whole th three hours. You just go to the one hour uh, meeting that you have. And at least that would make for less uh, gearing up time for the staff. I understand, but my my piece of that is that if you're if the people that are going to be on the committee, I really feel like they should be able to determine the meeting time so that it's easier for them to be able to come. Because if for some reason we determine the meeting time and they can't make it, then then they, they're just not able to be on the committee. And I think it's really not fair to them. So that's why I wouldn't want to just determine that, you know, these two meetings are going to be back to back because it wouldn't be fair to the, I mean, if that's what they, they decide, like if the two committees decide that that's what they want to do, fine. But I, I just don't think it's fair to the committee members if that's, um, for us to determine their meeting times. So that's my piece. I, I agree that it makes it a little bit more difficult to arrange, but we're not detect, we're not, wouldn't be dictating the time or the day. Um, presumably that could be worked out, but I realize that it's harder when you get more people involved. Um, Lois, did you have anything else you wanted to follow up with? Yeah, I, you kind of just said it. I was just throwing out some times uh, and just because we have admin and budget at, on the same day doesn't mean it's going to be the same board members or and it could be different board members for one meeting and for another meeting. And having meetings at night creates a problem for staff. Uh, that means that, and some, you know, some people are at work at six o'clock in the morning and they already have two board members, uh, two board meetings at night uh, at that tend to go on way too long sometimes. So uh, I, I wasn't trying to act, I was just throwing out some ideas. It w they wouldn't really be up to me, but it isn't, I, I mean, it doesn't mean that the same board members are going to be on the same, you know, that they're going to have to be there for unlikely, two or three hours. Unlikely to be. Um, yeah. Can I have um, either a motion of something to do or... Um, Excuse or, or, me, my hand is up. Um, go ahead. Did, did, did you see that my hand was up? Yes. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, just a couple other uh, points. Um, uh, the Engineering Environmental Committee um, committees used to be together. I think that change happened in 2015 or 2016. And the reason they were split is because the general expertise and knowledge 
uh, of which I think you can tell from the people that have applied to be in committees and is pretty substantial in our area, are very different for both of those. Uh, and what was happening is that one topic was getting short shift depending on which, um, which folks got uh, appointed to it. So it, it really didn't work out very well. And I think it was very wise for the board uh, at that time to make that split because it's, it's just two different, two different worlds. Um, I would also like to point out that um, starting in 2018, late 2018, early 2019, um, the board committees were changed to increase the number of public participants from one to N, N being whatever the board decided it wanted to do for that particular committee at that particular time. Um, that change, um, which was something that was opposed by a number of folks at the time, uh, actually, in my opinion, has resulted in what we have now, which is a really large number of people applying for committees um, and being interested in serving the community, serving the district, and helping us out with their expertise, offering their expertise. Um, and so the, the notion that we would, in some way, go backwards and take action to combine committees, which as I think Ken said, you know, you, that you're, you're basically gonna reduce the number of people that are gonna be on committees at that point, I think is a, is a, is a horrible step backwards um, and something that we really should avoid. I think it also goes against the grain of the most recent grand jury reports that were done on the SLDWD, which at that time, um, took the district to task for lack of public participation and lack of transparency. And I think the changes we made to the committees were specifically designed to address that. Thank you. Would anyone like to make a motion? Uh, if we don't make a motion, um, then basically we're doing nothing and things remain as they are, okay? Sometimes and, that's a good thing. What, wait, wait. Uh, that, okay, that's, that's fine. Let's go on to the next item of business. Basically, we, we didn't have a motion and so that basically keeps things the same. I, I will say that I, I, I do take to heart what Tina said that this might be something we wanna revisit. I think one of Rick's Rick's goals was to start a conversation and um, there might be some things and tweaks that we can do later on. We don't have to decide on it all today. So I mean, that was my main purpose yeah. was to start a conversation. And, and there was never any uh, recommendation to limit public or to reduce the amount, the amount of meetings. Just want to make that clarification. So you want to move on to, to 4D, that's the public committee members for 2020. It's recommended that the uh, board review the current application. 4C. Oh, I'm sorry, 4C. Point of, point of order. Are we at 4C or 4D? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I went, went too far. 4C. 4C. I'll, uh, it's recommended. This is the board member committee appointments for 2021. Staff recommends that the board of directors review membership assignment of the existing committees and by motion of the board approve board committee assignments. Uh, the 2020 committees are uh, as follows. The current committee standing committees are administration committee, which is director Fultz and Henry. The budget and finance committees are director Fultz and Henry. The engineering committee was director Ferris and Moran, which are no longer on the board. And the environmental committee was directors Ferris and Moran. The multi-agency body, the Santa Margarita groundwater was director Ferris, Henry and Moran as the alternate. Section 1.4 of the Policies and Procedure Manual established that review of committee assignments will occur during the December meeting of each year or as soon as therefore uh, thereafter as practical. Staff ex experience with board committee assignments is that the board president would present his or her suggestions for full board deliberation uh, at the time. The full board would discuss and vote on committee assignments uh, for the next year. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the chair. Thank you, Director. Uh, District Manager Rogers, um, because we're in this unusual situation where we have um, one member that will be to the board that will be appointed um, in a couple of weeks, what I'm suggesting is that um, 
I not put forward a list of board members on the committees today um, and that we defer that um, until we have the new member appointed, hopefully on December 16th. Um, and with the exception of the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency, because um, they have a meeting on the 9th and they would be nervous if we didn't have somebody officially um, assigned to that. And um, as I understand it, the LADOC liaison can wait until the next round of uh, LADOC folks are, uh, the new group is constituted, which I understand is in the new year in January or February. So I think, sorry, I think the meeting is on the 10th. Uh, uh, the, yeah, sorry, just a point of clarification, uh, yeah. Um, of, you mean of Santa Margarita? Yeah, okay. Um, so what I am suggesting is um, that Tina Toe, myself, be the two representatives and that Lois Henry be the alternate. And um, that I will put forward as a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? I, I guess I guess I have to go out to the public. Um, that's the way we've been doing it. So are there any um, public members that want to comment on that? I don't see any hands. How about on the telephone call-in listener? Nope. All right, so let's go back um, to the board. Is there any discussion among the board members? Um, if not, then um, Holly, could you please uh, call a roll call vote? Chris Holly. Bennett, Mayhoff, 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 Mayhoff,
The district's 2020 standing committees, excluding LADCA, LADOC, are the administration committee, which is two board members and three public members, budget and finance committee, which is two board members and two public members, the engineering committee, which is two board members and three public members, the environmental committee, which is two board members and three public members. The district advertised openings for public members to the standing committees on October 2nd through November 20th. Following in your agenda packet and online are a listing of the applicant, applicant choices and current committee assignments uh, attached are the applications that were received. And I'll turn it back over to the chair. Okay. Um, we'll first go to any attendee comments. Seeing none, how about our telephone call-in person? If not, I'll go uh, to Director To. Thank you. Uh, again, I would like to defer this matter until after the new board member is appointed. Um, assuming we will appoint someone on the 16th, uh, I think the new committee members, given um, the new board member some time to review the applications, I think we should review the committee members at the following meeting, which I think would be the first week of January. That is my, um, I don't know if I need to make a motion for that or whatever, but well, let, discussion. Let's, from, um, yeah. Discussion, I, I think yes. we we'll to do this is everybody gets a chance to speak. Absolutely. Then I'll ask for a motion, okay? Okay, go ahead, thanks. <laughs> Any Anybody, uh, Director Henry or Director Fulce, would you like to comment on this? So can you see my hand when it's raised? Because no, I'm not no, sure what your protocol is going to be. No, on I just so. saw it. Go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we should go ahead and appoint public members of the committee tonight. Um, we set expectations for the number of committees that this district is going to have. And we also set expectations around what action was going to be taken tonight. Um, I see we have a very large number of uh, attendees, and I see a lot of the names on there are people who are attending because they want to speak to their candidacy uh, on the committees. And I think it would be doing them a huge disservice if we weren't to take action on that tonight. Um, the, um, I, I think the, the fact that we are down, we are short one board member really shouldn't uh, impact uh, our ability to make decisions about uh, committee meetings tonight. Thank you. Director or, excuse Henry. me, not meetings, committee members tonight, sorry. Director Henry? Well, I really think it would be a good idea of that whatever board members are on various committees can take a look at uh, the people who've applied to be on various um, committees and, and see what they want. I, I mean, I know we've said, I think last year we said just everybody who wants to be on a committee, but maybe we aren't going to say that this year. I don't know what we're going to do this year. Um, and I, I just feel like it would be better if and I realize that people have called in or come into the meeting, maybe hoping to see if there was a decision. It isn't like the old days when we got in our car and drove down to the district. It's just pretty easy to go to the computer, log in, you're at home, you're comfortable, and 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 listen, it, it to me, it's just not a big deal if we wait for the new board member. And I don't think we need, if there's somebody really interested in being on the board, they should be able to look at all this information that we have seen tonight and already know if they're interested in being on the board the various people who've applied to be citizen members. I don't think we'd need to wait till January. I think we could do it in on the 16th. That's my not so humble opinion. Um, 
I uh, would prefer to defer it both because I think the new member uh, should be involved in the decision. Also, um, at least two um, of the people that have applied for committee positions have also applied for uh, the director position. And so it is a little strange. I'd, I'd rather appoint the director first um, than have somebody appointed to a committee and then they get promoted or whatever you would want to call it. But the main thing that worries me about it is that when I look at the group of attendees, I'd say only half of them are people that are um, actually, or if that, are actually the people that applied. Um, and the uh, message that Polly sent out to them invited them to attend, but literally said it was not required. And so I don't think it would be fair to interview a few people and then have other people not be able to uh, state state their case tonight because they weren't told that they had to be here. Any, um, so at that point, I'd like to hear um, a motion from somebody. Uh, again, I have my hand up to comment. Are we only going to be allowed to comment one time as board members? Um, I would prefer that on um, something fairly simple like this that we could go ahead. But yes, if you have a short comment, please go ahead. Well, I, I have a comment and it will be the time that it will be. Uh, that is our um, culture on this board is to allow everybody to have their say. Um, I understand the, the fact that uh, people don't have to get in their car and drive down here. But I still think it's a respectful thing that when we invite people to be at, an, at a meeting to handle the business at hand, that, that we should do that. And I'm disappointed that we aren't uh, going to be able to do that. Um, with respect to um, uh, people having applied for the board position, I'm not aware of who those people are. Is that a common knowledge thing at this point in time? Because apparently you are aware of that. And I'd like to be aware of who has applied for the board position. Is that something that should be sent around to all of the board members as the applications are coming in? How did that information get communicated? In, in the case I'm talking about, there are actually people that I spoke to. There's not- That, that they told you. Yeah, so it's not it's not that there's some secret list somewhere. It was just- Well, I, I, I mean, how do you know that they applied? Because they told me. Well, <laughs> there are people that I just run into that, that told me. Well, I, so, okay. So we have different knowledge on different folks. Well, it doesn't- so because, it, because that might actually make a difference for me if I knew that, because if there are a substantial number of people applying for committees that are in attendance, that are also applying for the board member, um, yeah, that would be a significant thing to know. But apparently the information is not sort of evenly distributed here. Okay. Well, I don't know what it is, if that makes you feel better. I, I'm just saying that we have uneven dist distribution of information, and I think that's an issue when it comes to making decisions. Well, I, I can't really control who you're friends with and who I'm friends with. So, uh, you know, I, I don't have the information either, Bob. I think that she's it, not. It, nothing, it, this, shouldn't be, this shouldn't be a friend's thing. This should only be a thing about facts. This is not a friend's thing. This is doing business. You apparently have information the rest of us do not have. And that's why I passed it on. Because I, as you just said, um, who, it who might. Are those, who are those two people? I'm not going to divulge that right now. Because it's not anybody's <laughs> business uh, other than uh, who, who they are the public right now because the list is not complete but they have another two days okay we have uh, we have secrets then on how we're going to make decisions okay i got it i got it thank you rick rogers would you like to speak um just you know one comment as we we move forward on committees i know there's been a lot of talk back and forth about appointments one thing that was evident last year with committee assignments the committee's got assignment. We had our first meetings and before the board gave direction. Um, I really want to get goals and objectives to the board as soon as possible and get the board to assign committees what they're supposed to be working on. I think that's important and that we don't have committees set up and the first thing they're going to ask, but what are we going to do? I'd like that first meeting to have the goals of the board 
uh, approved uh, to give the committees as assignments. I, I think that'll work a lot smoother and help staff because the work that we prepare for committees then just goes automatically after the committee to straight to the board and that will cut down on time if we are working all together. Um, just a, just a, a comment. Point, point of order that runs counter to the board policy manual and that would need to be changed in order to do that. Thank you. Uh, director. Uh, Director Cho. Uh, yeah, I think um, I, I would. I wanted to just point out that um, if if we waited until next week to, we're gonna we, we have to wait till next week to appoint the new director. Um, but it took me about an hour to go over all these applications, and I really don't think it's fair to the new person to just expect them to know what people they want to be on what committees, um, especially since we have more applicants than we do spaces, uh, like to review all of that in like the two minutes they have in between. I don't, I just, I really feel like it's unfair to the new member, it's sort of like, you know, initiation by fire to, for this new person to appoint people when they have no, no relevant information. So I was going to point that out. And, um, as far as the, um, for Director Mehun, I think, you know, her information is her information. That's fine. She's not keeping any secrets. I don't actually know who's applied at all. Uh, so, you know, the fact that she ran into a couple of people who may have mentioned it, I don't, I, I don't think I'm not offended by that. I don't think I'm missing anything. I just, um, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing the applications when, when they're available. So. Uh, Director Henry. Well, comment on that. Um, all those applications that people for people who've applied to be on committees have are out there. They're out there. Anybody who's interested in being on the board should be paying attention to what's happening at meetings right now. And if they look at the agenda, and at the agenda packet, all the information is there. And I, I don't see any reason to delay because um, I, I, again, I don't know who you talk to and it doesn't matter because I'm sure Director Fultz talks to people in the public and somebody could say something to him, just like they said to you, hey, I, I decided to throw my name in the hat. Well, you know, I'm kind of isolated here in Long Pico. The chances of me hearing who's thrown their name in the hat is probably not going to happen. Um, but I, unless maybe I'm at the grocery store and somebody says, oh, hey, hey. Um, but it, it's it's not a big deal. And, and it is what it is. I and Frankly, I'm getting tired of this point of order, point of order. All of a sudden, you're getting point of order time after time tonight. Two, uh, after uh, Steve Swan was off the board and the first two meetings that I conducted, I had somebody yelling at me point of order. It's annoying and it shouldn't be happening. There should be a little bit of civility here and put your hand up and not yell out point of order. Excuse me, I think it's rude. Director Henry, um, Director Fultz, this is the yes, third yes. round for you. So please keep it well, brief. Uh, there's there's lots of things to talk about. So with respect to Director Henry's recent statement, the uh, point of order, the way you do that is exactly the way I've been doing it. Now, if we wish to change Robert's rules of order uh, to um, something else, that would be fine. But point of order is something that goes immediately to the head of the uh, of the table. 
So, uh, Lois, I don't really know what your objection is. It's a perfectly valid because thing. Did you do it so many times? Could I, could I finish? Could I, could I finish, please? I, I, I did not I, interrupt I think you. I'm going to ask I, you to... Hang on a sec. Hang on no. a sec. I also have a this question is, for... I also I'm, have a question for saying, Gina. Is Gina, point. are the applications that have been made for the directors a public document at this point? That is, we can go and... Uh, and go and see who is um, applying for the board now before the agenda is released. Uh, uh, Chair Mahood, I'll go ahead and answer that question if that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, those are public documents. Um, I mean, they will be released in short order, but there's nothing confidential about them. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, if do I have a motion? Or I have a mo motion. Oh. Can I make a motion? Yes, please. Somebody. <laughs> I would. Uh, I would like to defer the committee, the selection of committee members, until the new director is appointed. I don't believe a motion is required for that. Uh, well, it's not required, but it can be clarifying. made. And yeah, I, I think that it's clarifying to just say that because we don't know exactly when the, I mean, in, we hope that the new director is appointed at the next meeting, but who knows something could go wrong. So let, let's just say until the, don't, so don't let me put words in your mouth, say it again. <laughs> the motion is that we would defer selection of committee members until the new board member is appointed. The, yes, so the, the public members of committees until the new board member is. Uh, okay, are there any, and do I have a second? Yes. Director Henry seconds. Are there any comments, Dr. Director Fultz? Yes, a uh, clarifying uh, question on that, um, since I'm a little confused. So does that mean that we would appoint the board member and then the following meeting, we would do the committee appointments. Is, was that your intent, Gina? Um, I I think Director Henry makes a good point in that they did they they have access to this packet with the applications in it. So I I would encourage any applicants um, to review the applications now so that they could choose. I didn't realize that that would be an option for them. So. Yeah, it would be good that, that if if we could if we could do it in the same meeting, but I don't I'm not sure. So that's not something I think we're well, choosing right now. I think right now I'm just choosing to delay the committee the public committee appointments until the new um, member is chosen. But but I, I agree with with Director Henry that they they have the ability to review the the applications that are in the packet. Well, the, the thing that I the thing that I want to make sure that we aren't doing is that we aren't putting the appointment of the committee members on the next agenda for the 16th, I believe it is, and then for whatever reason we fail to appoint uh, somebody, and then we're asking the committee member, the prospective committee members, to come back for a third meeting. I, I, I agree. Think we need to, I think we need to bring some certainty here to the scheduling for this. So yeah, I can see that. Even, I, even, even I agree. if you wish to have a special meeting to do committee appointments, which I'd rather not do, but we could, uh, I want to bring some certainty to the process. And right now, you're, it seems like we still have this uncertainty because if you're concerned about not having board member, uh, appointing committee members without a board member, we may not have a board member at the next meeting either. That's possible. Um, can we, uh, would you consider that a friendly amendment? Um, Dr. To uh, Director To that uh, we post postpone the actual uh, selection of the public members until the meeting following the one at, at which we appoint the next director. Um, I can go either way. Uh, like I said, I think that the, the who has ever applied for the board should be able to review the current board packet that has the applications I, I, and director Fultz is right we have to have clarity in the motion we can't have right so he, he so can I clarify with Bob Bob are you saying that you want 
you're saying that you want it all to be, you want it to be us to choose a specific date or do you want us to say, uh, can you clarify what you were looking for? Well, what I really want is to do it tonight, but given we're not going to do that, um, what I what I believe we should be doing is what uh, Director Mahood suggested, which is it's the next meeting following whenever the person is appointed. And that way there is a certainty to the scheduling for our prospective committee members. Now, I think it's very likely we will appoint somebody next meeting, mm -hmm. but it's not guaranteed. And I, I really don't want to have a put a situation where we're inviting prospective committee members back for a third meeting. Yeah, thank I, I think you that for would that. be very uh, yeah. inconvenient for them. I, I agree. I think you're right. I, I uh... So you're <laughs> accepting his friendly amendment to your motion. And yes, I think Lois has then, something to say. I, I know, but let's clarify that first. Then we'll ask I, Lois. Yes, I will agree with uh, Director yeah, Holtz. Thank you. Director Henry, can't hear you. Okay. Director Henry, we can't yeah. hear you. Can you hear me now? Now I can. Okay. For one thing, we must appoint a board member before January 2nd. Fourth. And I can't imagine why we wouldn't appoint somebody on the 16th. And and if we don't do it on the 16th, then we're going to have to have another special meeting. But um, it just, it, it seems like this is just blown up into some big deal that it really doesn't need to be. And of course, there's Rick Rogers wanting to say something and we're yakking away. But okay. well, we only have so many days to pick another board member or it goes to the Board of Supervisors. Okay, I think we all understand that. Um, Rick Rogers? Yeah, I, you know, I, I suggest that I, I, we understand the intent of what the Board is looking for, and as we put the agenda together with the Board Chair, we'll make sure that uh, this item is on after we select uh, a new Board member. I understand that's your intent, and we do have time if for some reason um, we don't make it on the 16th. We uh, have asked you to pencil a meeting for the 22nd, I do believe. Um, but we'll we'll make sure this is agendized accordingly. And I would just ask um, the board whether they would um, like to have the uh, members, the people that, from the public that have applied to stand up and give their three minute introduction and spiel at that meeting, because it's important that we, to be fair to all of them, that we let them know what the expectation is and do what what do people prefer? Is that a yes, Bob? <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Tina, uh, you don't want that? Uh, not necessarily. They all um, gave applications with resumes and so forth and with their application. And so, uh, to expe expedite the meeting, I don't think that that's necess necessary, especially since we have, you know, we have t over 20 people that applied. So, you know, 20 people times three minutes, that's already an hour. I'm just trying to to expedite it. Lois, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it seems like this is getting to be a mountain from a molehill. So, well, just, but just I, tell I'll us go along with. with I'll, okay. I'll go along with, I, I think, one, that will choose somebody on the 16th, and I also believe they would have time to look at all the applicants. And the other thing is... Well, it's actually what I'm asking you right now is whether you want the uh, applicants to have a three-minute chance to talk about themselves at the oh, meeting. you mean tonight? No, not tonight, because they were not told that uh, they were going to do that. And yeah. so that's what I, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, if we sure. want that done, we, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, so I think that, that I, I agree. So that's 3-1. So we're just going to, to Holly, just make sure that when that letter goes out to the um, letting them know in the meeting, we're going to make the decision that they, um, they will get a chance to speak. 
they don't have to, but they will get a chance to speak. Okay. All right. On to 4E. Uh, Rick, you're muted. Yes, thank you. Item 4E is the review of personal systems rules and regulations for 2021. And we have district council here to present this item to the board. I'm sorry, there was a motion and a second. Uh, Do Are we just gonna pass that by? I think we just sort of. Okay. Well, well I'm sorry, we, I'm, thank you for correcting no, We do need to vote on the one that we I gave about deferring yeah. it. Okay, so we're, the motion was to um, not uh, vote on the members of the, the public members of committees until after we've appointed the new uh, member of the board of directors and it would occur at the meeting following the appointment of the board of directors. Okay. Second. I think you made the motion. Yeah, you made the okay. motion. <laughs> it, it was already seconded a while back. Yeah, actually, Lois did too. Should so we just vote on it? Question. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm needing clarification now because I thought it was going to be the same meeting that no. the, uh, yeah. it's the meeting after. No, but, right, yeah, Bob, I, Bob, I, Bob I, had I, suggested I, that we defer it till the meeting after. So, and I just agree with him. as a friendly amendment to the, uh, yeah. by Director Fultz too. That and, and Tina accepted it, so that's that's the vote. Okay, President Mayhood. Yes. Director Fulce. Yes. Director Henry. Yes. Director Two. Yes. Thanks for passing on that, Holly. All right, now on to you, Rick. <laughs> okay. Yes, it's uh, item four E, the review of personal system rules and regulations for 2021. And we have district council here to present this item to the board. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Chair Mahood. Thank you, Rick Rogers. Um, this is one of, this is the first of two housekeeping matters that I have on tonight's agenda related to um, personnel policies of the district that need uh, regular review. This first item um, for E, related to the personnel system rules and regulations. Um, this is an item that according to the board manual is supposed to be reviewed by the board of directors in December each calendar year. Um, there haven't been any changes made to the personnel uh, rules and regulations in the recent past. It is a very important district or uh, document for purposes of the district. Um, it includes provisions related to uh, personnel management and issues such as the competitive selection process and exemptions from competitive selection that the district uses when hiring uh, and promoting, et cetera. The, I have reviewed the policy and determined that it, it, it likely needs some legal changes uh, or to be consistent with current law. However, I think the best way to execute those changes is for me to confer with um, the district manager and the HR specialist about some of the district's practices to make sure that what the district actually does is adequately reflected and the applicable laws are addressed in the rules and regulations. I don't particularly want to do that um, you know, here in this public forum. I'd like to get that input and then bring it back to the board of directors for um, those changes for review and approval. Um, however, I did want to bring this item to the board prior to bringing a red line in case the board has some input or sees something in the rules and regs that needs to be addressed or changed so that I could get that input or any input from the board related to the process before we just come back with a red line for approval. So I appreciate your um, taking a look at this and entertaining it as kind of a housekeeping item and I would welcome any input the board has related to this. Okay, I'm gonna go out to attendees first to see if anybody has a comment. I don't see any hands up. How about our phone-in listener? Nope. Okay, so uh, we can go back to the board. Does any member of the board have a comment? Wow, okay, yes. 
Lois. Oh, I was just going to say uh, she knows the new laws, and I I think she should do some housekeeping on this uh, and talk to staff before she does that. Anybody else have any comments? Oh, uh, Director Toe. Um, this was just um, maybe unrelated, but I had mentioned to Holly earlier today to update some of the other um, application forms related to uh, gender equity. Um, and that's all, I, I wasn't sure if there was anything in, related to that in the regulations. So that was it. Anybody else? Um, so we need a, a motion, um, which would, does anybody wanna put forward a motion? Um, I'll make a motion. I, I make a motion that our attorney uh, meets with staff and makes necessary changes to um, this, to the, um, it's the called the personnel system rules and regulations uh, to go along with current law. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? If not, Holly, could you take the roll call vote, please? Director Mayhood? Aye. Director Falls? Yes. Director Henry? Yes. Director Two? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, now on to item 4F, the respectful workplace policy. District Manager Rogers, you want to present that? I can't hear you then. Rick, this is Gina. Would you like me to take this item? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Gina. Okay. Oh, no, that's that's perfectly all right. It usually does go to Rick and then to me. Um, had a mute problem. Thank you, Gina. Um, so this one, um, before you with item 4F, you have another um, employment related policy of the district. Um, this one's a little shorter. It's just a few pages. Um, this one really requires reworking. And the reason for that is that um, the law mandated an update to the anti-harassment policy uh, that needed to be done before the end of this calendar year. And that was uh, done by the board at the November 5th meeting, if I'm remembering correctly. So the district now has a new anti-harassment policy, the discrimination, harassment and retaliation prevention policy that complies with current law. And it's now redundant. Um, and potentially conflicts with elements of this older respectful workplace policy. So it's really important that we not have conflicting policies on the books and that we get these updated. Um, for this one, um, I, I really wanted to make the board aware of the types of changes that I intend to make to the policy before I, I go and redline it and bring it back to the board. Um, and, and make sure you know that the, that the board is comfortable with those types of changes and also to find out if there are other types of changes that the board wants to make to this policy. Um, and so the, the types of changes that I'm proposing to make to this is, is of course to eliminate the redundancy and the potential conflicts with the older, um, uh, between this older respectful workplace policy and the newer prevention policy, and also clarify that the prevention policy is the primary tool for addressing potentially unlawful conduct within the district. Um, this respectful workplace policy is really something a little bit extra. It, for the most part, it addresses other types of potentially undesirable conduct that may be damaging to morale, but not unlawful in most cases. Um, and I think that should be more clear to distinguish the two policies from each other. Um, and also I would like to clarify some of the special reporting process in the policy by which um, I as district council may in rare instances 
be required to investigate one of these matters and report to the board. Um, I've had some concerns in the past about kind of the trans how transparency and confidentiality work would work hand in hand related to that process. And I'd like to spell it out a little better um, for the board's consideration. So, um, but you know, I, I absolutely welcome any feedback um, that the board may have in terms of how we deal with this policy. Do we have any comments by board members? Um, uh, Director Henry. I, I just have a, a question. Um, so respectful workplace, does, does this in any way maybe affect how board members speak to staff? Uh, or is it strictly staff to staff? Well, that's, that is one of the kind of quirks of this policy. It does encompass um, a wide, wider range of communications, including um, communications between the board and the staff and provides a vehicle for addressing those kinds of issues um, in a manner that may be a little different than the anti-harassment policy. But yes, it could potentially apply to communications between board members and staff members if there's something that's viewed as um, just putting it sort of roughly like damaging to workplace morale in terms of how communications are taking place. Okay, thank you. Uh, doctor, uh, doctor, I don't know why I keep saying that. Director Cho. <laughs> I think Bob was, was ahead of me. Um, I'm trying to not, I'm, I'm not going. Oh, okay. I, okay, I'm that's fine. I, I just had a small, small piece for, uh, for Gina because um, I noticed that Again, I was I was thinking about the gender thing earlier today. Um, in the it's a San Lorenzo Valley Water District Respectful Workplace Policy 2017, and um, it's uh, on page 87 of our packet. It there's a discriminatory behavior um, clause at the bottom, and it mentions sex and sexual orientation, but not gender. And I noticed that gender is included in the the one after that. Um, then the other policy that's listed after that. So the um, retaliation. So so the the second one is the one that you've updated. Is that correct, Gina? That's correct. Okay, looks good. Um, then that's that's fine. And I appreciate your work on this. It's it's uh, looking a lot cleaner than the previous one. Okay, thank you. Yeah, you you absolutely flagged an issue that is one of the things that needs to be dealt with in the respectful workplace policy. Director Fultz. Yes, thank you. Uh, Gina, I, I do think that it makes sense to do an update on this. I was wondering though, if you could give uh, some examples of the potentially undesirable or unlawful conduct that would be the focus of this reworked um, respectful workplace policy. Yeah, uh, okay. I'm happy to address that. And um, I, um, and let me tell you, I, I, I want to address this kind of as carefully as, as I can because, you know, these are issues that really do affect, affect people in, in the workplace. And I don't mean to, to diminish any particular scenario that I give here, but the, the most basic distinction between what would be addressed in the anti-harassment policy versus um, the respectful workplace would be it could be, for example, an abusive situation where somebody feels like they're being, um, you know, unfortunately, you know, demeaned or um, uh, dealt with in a way that makes it difficult for them to do their job um, that is not necessarily um, related to a protected classification that would make the behavior illegal under a, har a harassment policy. And, and so and that's that why, be, you know, I think the focus is on sort of undesirable behavior um, as opposed to illegal behavior. It provides a tool to address it, but um, you know, I just want to be clear that there are different types of behavior in terms of how they're regulated. And that would be both um, inside of staff sort of um, uh, up, down, sideways through the organization. It, it basically covers all interactions in that in that regard. 
Yeah, I think the intent for the respectful workplace policy is to provide a more flexible tool for addressing this. And this is my view. It may not be the view of others, but that it provides a more flexible tool for addressing various kinds of potentially undesirable behavior that wouldn't um, uh, that, that don't fall into the category of illegal harassment. So, you know, the anti-harassment policy deals with specifically the types of relationship that could constitute illegal harassment, and there's a number of them. Um, but the respectful workplace policy, I think the intent is to be more flexible and address pretty much any kind of relationship within the district that could involve, and, yeah, problematic. And, and would this, sorry, and would this be um, behavior or issues that would first try to be resolved through HR or the person's um, uh, manager before it kind of got into this second, this this next stage of resolution in which you would be getting involved as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And um, for most interactions, for example, at the staff level between staff members. Um, I believe the process that's outlined in the respectful workplace policy and that I don't propose to adjust involves encouraging the person who's affected to tell the person who's engaging in the behavior that it's you know, a problem for some reason or that they would prefer they stop. And then it sort of escalates from there within the, the district's employment structure. The, the only types of situations where I would potentially become involved are situations involving the district manager or a board member or a member of the public potentially, um, where it really isn't, doesn't fall within the staff management structure or the district's HR. Okay, so the, the respectful workplace policy then really isn't intended to be for staff members necessarily. Well, I think it is primarily, and I mean, this, this, and again, this is my point of view, uh, and it may not be others, but I think it is primarily intended to be a tool for the district's internal use, but it also provides these additional aspects related to the board interactions and interactions with the district manager, et cetera. Okay, great. I appreciate you going through that and, and explaining that in a little bit more detail. I, I, I still think it's a great, would be a great thing to do uh, to get it refreshed and updated. Any other comments? Uh, can I have a motion, please? Uh, well, if there isn't one, I'll, I'll advance one um, that we instruct um, district Council to uh, refresh the respectful workplace policy. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. <clears throat> Polly, could you do the roll call vote, please? Oh, it's not on. Uh, President Mayhood. Aye. Director Fultz. Yes. Director Henry. Yes. Director Two. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Um, and the final thing I want to ask is get clarification from District Manager Rogers regarding the date and time of the next board meeting. I do believe, uh, Holly, correct me if I'm wrong, it is the uh, 16th of December. At 5.30 p.m. 5.30. There okay. will be a closed session item, as I understand it, before that meeting. We're not at that meeting. And uh, Chair Mayhood, we will go over the agenda shortly um, for that meeting. Okay. Well, I think that's it. So the meeting is adjourned at 642. Thank Five. you. 544. Oh, five. Yeah. Thank you. 542. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all. Good night. Bye now. Good night. Get that Noel and Ian?